If you want to sound like the funkiest, grooviest drummer ever, you've got to be able to throw in hi-hat barks, which are just quick open notes, at will during a groove. But the precision required to do this often eludes us and we're left with sloppy inability. But I don't want that to be you, not anymore. I'm gonna teach you the hack that gets you quickly nailing hi-hat barks today. This is not as hard as you think it is. You can do this. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. I'm here to help you become the drummer and musician that others want to play with, who sounds awesome with a band, making music, nailing your favorite songs. And I help you do this by giving you the core non-glamorous drumming skills, the simple building blocks that help you grow faster and with less overwhelm. And hey, if you are a beginner, I've got a special gift for you. If you have ever struggled with playing the ideas you hear in your head, where maybe you hear a part from a song, you hear a certain groove or a fill, when it comes time to play it, it's just really hard getting your limbs to cooperate. That probably is because you are lacking four-way coordination. Because if you don't have four-way coordination, where your brain is able to fully communicate with both hands, both feet, then everything will feel tedious and difficult and stuff will take forever to learn and it'll drive you nuts and life will be hard. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But if you have four-way coordination, with four-way coordination, everything is easy and more fun because then your brain is able to communicate with your limbs and get them to immediately play what you hear in your head. And so learning new parts and new songs and new grooves and fills is a breeze and everything is more fun on the drums. How's that sound? You can do that. I want you to download my free guide. It's called 30 Days to Four-Way Rock Coordination. Thousands of drummers have gone before you working through this guide. And what I hear from so many students is that when you get to days 10, 12, maybe 15, that's where the magic starts to happen and you really feel things opening up, unlocking, and you start to achieve that freedom. So be patient, stick with it. Even if it takes you more than 30 days, that's not the point. The point is these are steps, individual steps. You work on this on this first day and then when you're ready, move on to this one, then this one. The instructions are super clear. You'll have a lot of fun with this. So go grab that guide, totally free. It's just a simple PDF, total no brainer in the description below. All right, on with today's lesson. Generally speaking, hi-hat open notes and barks especially just end up being sloppy for so many drummers where there's just not enough precision between hands and left foot to really get things tight. And so that's what we've got to target today so that you're able to play these at will and they sound nice and crisp and professional. You can do this. We're gonna break down how to do it. This, by the way, is the third lesson in a series of three hi-hat lessons. If you wanna check out the previous two last week, we talked about the leg bounce which is actually a really key prerequisite to what we're getting into today. So if you missed that lesson last week about effortless left foot timekeeping, you can build into your grooves, go check that out, I'll link it. And then back in the first video in the series, we talked about how to avoid stick clash when you're having to cross over. And so just dealing with the whole frustrating hand tangle up when we're trying to play quick grooves with loud backbeats, um, that's a lot of fun, hopefully really helpful to you. So go check out that one. But today is our final video in this series, final lesson. And we're digging into one of the biggest hi-hat challenges there is, which is open notes and barks. I remember being in high school and there was this particular song. Um, any of you who have played in church for a long time uh, or who were fans of like Christian rock back in the 2000s, you may have heard of this song. This is kind of obscure. A song by Hillsong United called Now That You're Near. It came out, I believe, in 2002. And when I was in high school, uh, in the late 2000s, this song was, it was just, it was a, a favorite song. Um, and a lot of, you know, high school youth worship bands where we're playing all the upbeat worship songs that sounded like Green Day pretty much. And so this was one of them. And I remember finding this song and there's this section of the song between the verse and the chorus where it's this Tom group. And I listened to it and I heard, wow, that's really cool. They're doing this Tom groove and somehow they're throwing in these little hi-hat that thing, how in the world are they doing it? It sounds, so, it sounds like so much fun. How am I gonna figure that out? So I remember like working on my drum set in my bedroom and just trying to figure that out. And it was the most difficult thing ever. And then years later, I remember revisiting this and realizing, you know what? That's not nearly as hard as I once thought it was because now I've got a skill under my belt that actually makes this pretty effortless. And that is the underrated hack I wanna teach you today. If you use the leg bounce, which is what we talked about last week, where you're keeping time like this, by bouncing your heel, as well as, I'm gonna teach you a strategic hi-hat bark exercise that'll help you tie your kick into this. Between those two things, you're gonna be able to do this stuff effortlessly too. But first, let's talk about that whole leg bounce thing. So 
I'm calling this the easy bark hack because it requires hardly any thought, especially if you were with us last week where we talked about the leg bounce, because you can immediately have open notes, barks happen by default, barely with any extra thought when you've got the leg bounce happening. And this is our step one today. So this is kind of a two-step action step here. Step one, the easy hi-hat bark trick. So we wanna have our eighth note leg bounce going on. So these are eighth notes. Imagine if we're playing alternating sixteenths with our hands though. So that would sound like, the right hand's locking in with hi-hat, left hand's offsetting, just like that. But now let's move those hands to the hi-hats. Here's what happens. Isn't that cool? I remember the first time I stumbled upon that as a beginner, it was like, whoa, I'm getting these magic open hi-hat notes here. This is really fun. So we're literally just playing alternating 16ths on the hi-hats while we're bouncing our left leg playing eighth notes. And as our left leg, as this leg bounce thing becomes more and more natural in autopilot, we're not even having to think about that. All we're thinking about is the hands. So practice that, work on getting it in sync, make sure that right stick is lining up with the right foot closing, excuse me, the left foot closing, make sure right hand lines up with the left foot closing, just like that. Then kind of as our part two to this step, we wanna then move right hand to the ride. So same alternating hand thing, we're just gonna move right hand from the hi-hat to the ride. Now what I want you to experiment with here is different amounts of openness. If, in, if as you're doing this, you're finding that your, your hi-hat bark is kind of wimpy, like, like that, just let them open up a little bit more. Because if you let them open really far, everybody should have their hi-hats adjusted, by the way, with at least an inch of space so that you can do this really well. If they're not opening far enough, not that that's a bad sound, maybe that's what you want in certain songs, but make sure you've got a nice strong bark sound happening. So let your hi-hats open a little bit more. Make sure that they're already starting to open as you hit. Because if you make contact before they open, there's nothing because they're still closed. And so you've got to focus a little bit on that timing. So focus on that precision if you need to. So focus on that left hand, left foot precision and making sure that as you've got that bounce going, you're striking right as they start to open. We're alternating the hands. Now we're gonna to start to get a little bit crazier with this. We're gonna line the kick up with the bark. So that means we're gonna line our right foot up with our left hand. Now this is a little bit of a coordination challenge if you're new to this kind of thing because lining up left hand with right foot and lining up right hand with left foot can be a little bit funky. That's essentially what's gonna happen here. We're going right hand, left foot together, then we're going right foot, left hand together. Mm, 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 back and forth like that. Uh, maybe, maybe try not to think about it too much <laughs> if it seems complicated. Just practice going really slow with this. So again, without the kick first. And then see if you can just add in the kick with the bark. Just try it without thinking too hard. If it all falls apart, that's okay. Go super slow with it. You can also practice first off just alternating right hand and right foot because a common coordination struggle I hear time and time again is I can't get my right hand to split from my right foot. So practice this. Just like that, and then add in the hi-hat. So we're essentially doing right hand and left foot together, alternating that combination with the right foot. Get that feeling good, then line the left hand up with the right foot. Spend however much time you need to to get this together. I know this feels really weird at first and it feels like it's on the verge of falling apart probably as you get it going. But go super slow, we're not in a hurry. Practice it over and over again. Remember, I think I said this in the previous lesson in this series, coordination is built at slow tempos. Go slowly. Yes, these things can be used at much faster tempos and a lot of times that's what we wanna do. But the actual technique and the mental power required to play these things 
happens at the slow tempos. You've got to you've got to spoon feed your brain. You can't do stuff fast or for just 30 seconds and expect that your brain has learned it. You've got to go slow with lots of repetition, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of doing this so that you are teaching it to your brain. You're opening new pathways. You're splitting your brain into four. That's what needs to happen here. So practice that, get this pattern going. Once you've done that, okay, that's really cool because now you have the ability not only to keep eighth note time while playing hi-hat barks, but to also line the kick up with those. That's really cool. What that gives us the ability to do is something kind of like this. And that's not difficult because we're literally doing the same thing we just did. We're keeping eighth note time here, which allows us to, with the underrated hack, just throw in, throw in little hi-hat barks like that in the middle of the groove, and now we're lining up the kick with those because we practice doing that. We're throwing in the kick with those barks on off beats. And it's just not that difficult when you practice these things over and over again and you get your right foot connected with your left hand there in the midst of the eighth note bounce like that. Now, if you're still having trouble, it's okay because I don't want to overwhelm you. I don't want to just stop here and say, all right, see if you can do all that. I want to help you out even more. So our next action step here is the shifting kick bark exercise. This is all in a PDF notation guide. I want you to go grab that so you can take it to your practice room and know exactly what to practice. Here's what we're gonna do. You may have heard me teach the shifting kick exercise before where we're just playing alternating singles with the hands. We could do it on snare or on closed hats. And we're playing kick notes repetitively on different parts of the beat. So starting out, we might play the beats, then shift the kick to the E's, and then the ands and the uhs like this. And so on. So each measure we're shifting the kick over. So we can do that same thing but every time we play the kick, open the hats real quick and play a hi-hat bark. So there's a couple ways we could play this. One would be like this. Just like that. Or we could have our hands on the snare and then reach up to the hi-hat whenever those barks need to happen. So again, starting with the kick on the beats, Just like that. I think it's a little trickier when you've got the hands on the snare just because you're having to move a little more and you're having to think about when to reach up even though you're still just playing alternating sixteenths. But you can do this either way, whichever way you prefer to play it. I recommend starting with the hands on the hats. That way the hands aren't having to move any and then you could transition hands to the snare. Let me demonstrate this for you with a metronome. I'm gonna get the metronome going in my ear nice and slow. We're gonna pick a slow tempo, probably 60 beats a minute. Um, I think that's probably Let's see how 60 feels. We'll start right there at 60. And if you need to go slower, that is totally fine. If you need to go 50 beats a minute, that's fine. Because remember, the goal is precision, precision over speed. That is how we build the coordination. But here's this exercise, the shifting kick hi-hat bark exercise at 60 beats a minute. Here's how it would sound both ways, where we're doing starting out on the hats and then maybe moving to the snare. I'll do each, each um, layer, each step of this for two bars. So we'll do the barks on the beats for two bars, and then the E's for two bars, and for two bars, etc. You get the idea.
what's also really cool here is you can kind of take this and run with it and you can see how, okay, that's, that's the exercise, that's how it's working. You could also add backbeats into this. So hit the snare on two and four or play an accent on two and four and suddenly you've got like a groove version of this. In other words, let's say we started there on the hi-hats, we could go. So practice those, those two exercises or those two versions of that exercise, doing those hi-hat barks there, throwing those in, and that's gonna empower you so much to be able to throw these into a groove. But even if all you practice is that first part, doing the, the hack where we've just got the leg bounce going on and we throw in the barks on the off beats, you can do that easily in a groove without even combining the kick with it or with combining the kick now that you know how to do it. And so that just gives you a powerful tool in your arsenal for creating really cool funky grooves as part of, you can use that as part of fills. I do that all the time where I'll be playing along and it's like. Limitless possibilities of what you can do with this. I could go into, you know, another <laughs> part two for this lesson and show you all of what you can do, but I want you to get creative. I want you to practice these building blocks, practice these exercises, and see how you can start building this into the stuff you're already playing. Have a lot of fun with this. Know that you can do this. Go grab the notation PDF so you know exactly what to practice. Grab the 30 days to four way rock coordination guide too. That's gonna to help you out a bunch. These two things really go hand in hand because we're building coordination either way. Have fun with those, take action. And hey, let me know in the comments, what's your favorite song that has a cool hi-hat open note part, whether it's you know a standard open note kind of thing like, like that or more of a bark thing. What's a song that has cool, open hi-hat notes in it? Mine was Now That You're Near by Hillsong United, 2002. If you've got one in mind, one that really inspires you to take action on this, name that in the comments. Let's, uh, let's have fun talking about our favorite hi-hat songs. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson next week. This wraps up our series. Uh, this is it for the hi-hat series. Let me know if you have any ongoing questions, other things that you think I need to cover in the future because we can do another hi-hat series down the road. There's so much hi-hat stuff we can talk about that uh, we could just as easily do another three or more lesson series on this. So let me know. Hope this was valuable to you. Know that you can do this. Stay non-glamorous. I'll see you next time.